patreon.com slash Feinberg Om Hello <laughs> As you can tell, we're on the, the, the quest to to sign up people to my Patreon. That's patreon.com slash Feinberg. Thank you so much to Adam, who is our first patron of this round. I always say of this round because I had two patrons when I started the Patreon. But I'm really excited about the Patreon because at first I was like, I, I don't want to get into this business of having to give extra, do extra stuff. But I think it's a lot of fun that I can come up with all kinds of stuff that I can put behind a paywall. <laughs> <laughs> just like the New York Times. So I'm very excited about that. Welcome to today's podcast. We're almost in, in I mean, Hanukkah is over. And the Jews are done celebrating. <laughs> but Christmas has not arrived yet. So a lot of people, we're, we're feeling the Christmas vibes are, are, are really kicking in. And I hope this episode has some useful information about dealing with the holidays. <laughs> Uh, as if I'm the one who's certified to, to help you deal with the holidays. But I definitely feel I feel the stress of everything. And I will talk a bit about uh, about that because today I, w- I woke up and I, it's Saturday morning. I can do a bit of thinking on Saturday morning. And I realized what I, I, w- I would like to be known as is a professional mind opener. <laughs> and and I want to really own that and that and so there there are a lot of things in my podcast that I would classify as mind opening and the music I work on is supposed to be that as well I think that's really the goal and that's why I like to work on lots of different types of music so uh today's episode I'm actually using I'm going to show you this notebook that I've um I've been using lately called oasis light is oasis is the brand um, profolio is the parent brand and it's made in japan and this this oasis light is very i really enjoy the this notebook so far i used to use a lot of moleskine moleskin never know how to pronounce it i used to use their craft journals you'd get three for about twenty dollars this thing is is so far very nice. They also have other style of notebooks that are a bit more expensive, but this is $4 for this and it's about I think 30 pages, but they they're really long pages. Yeah, 30 sheets. So that's probably 60 pages. B5 is the size and I write you I also found a new pen lately. This is the Faber Castle five uh 0.5 document proof free ink roller micro i like this excuse me you have to use it at the right angle though or else it doesn't feel that good but i've been i bring that up because i take a lot of notes that's how i that's how i roll and i have the biggest notes that I take are the what's called the morning pages, which are free writing, and I actually do free writing throughout the day. So that's part of my methodology, and that's why I think it's important to talk about my notebook and my pen. But this week's episode, we I'm going to talk a little bit about sleep and also the holidays and books. Yeah, cuz the holidays are good time for reading, so I'll, I'll talk a bit about some books that I've either finished or have on the go. So yeah, let's just jump right in here. The the topic of sleep is interesting. I I think sleep is the most important thing we can the most important gift we can give ourselves is a good night of sleep. I'm on to the topic of sleep because I'm I'm on I've been on for a very long time on the topic of mornings. And I believe having a good morning is is the is one of my priorities in life, really. 
and I'm referring to early, early morning. And I, I think a lot of this came about because I used to be a night owl. And that is probably my chronotype, which is describes, you know, there's owls and larks. And I'm a night owl, but I, I found a way to convert myself to a morning lark style person um, at least 10 years ago. So I get up early in the morning and I don't necessarily, some mornings I do actually try to get to some music as early as I can. I think that's the best thing you can do if, if, you, can t- if you can get to your creative work as soon as possible. But I think it's also just as good to, if you need to get to a, a gym to do some exercise, or if you uh, have a want quiet time and journaling and, and that sort of thing, and, and this early morning space allows you to get some uninterrupted time because most people are, are still asleep, then that's completely valid too because it would contribute to your creative practice, I believe or whatever practice you're on. <laughs> you don't necessarily need to call it creative practice, but so yeah, I think sleep I take I take fairly seriously and and I think, you know, trying to get to bed at a at a a time calculated based on the wake up time and just starting to to like I notice when I'm watching if I'm watching shows after dinner and I, I keep watching them a little longer than I should be, it's hard to get to sleep. You, you, before you know it, it's 11 o'clock and you don't know why you can't, why you haven't like dozed off yet. So I, I would say a big thing on sleep is to make sure you're getting the lights down earlier than, than po- earlier, earlier than you think. And also to make sure you, yeah, limit the screen time. I know that's been said so much. It's it's kind of annoying, but there's something really there to it. Like, should you be scrolling through screens before you get into bed? Like, I don't really, I, I think there is a disconnect there. And, and, you know, that's why reading is very nice and that sort of thing. The problem with me giving this type of talk is that I can't really speak to people who are in in who are couples and that they have these routines where they they stay up and watch shows together all night and I don't know how you would really deal with that transition from from screen time all night bef- till before bed if you're if you have a co-conspirator. So I that part of it as I I know I'm on a bit of a high horse that I say you can you know have a can be in candle lit <laughs> Um, bliss and and writing in a journal and reading great literature <laughs> before bed. But the reality is that for many people that that are, might be listening to this or watching, is that they they don't have that reality. It's it's different, and and maybe there needs to be a cultural shift in how people spend their night and in that sort of thing. And I can't I can't comment. But I I for me a priority is definitely. Um, making sure that the night is spent tr- doing my best to, to make sure I set myself up for uh, having a sort of a clear mind to go to sleep. And then, um, and, and then the, the whole other thing is the waking up. And I really believe that if I can wake up on time, uh, that is the first step to, to, the ikigai equation. Ikigai is is the purpose, the the buzzword of Japanese um, living a life of purpose, and and it liter I think it kind of means that like waking up with a sense of purpose is I- ikigai. And I really, it's it's a priority for me to to wake up and to know that I'm on a mission to to do something with this bag of bones that I was given. <laughs> that I'm, I'm walking around in this bag of bones, flesh and blood, and I have to put it to use or else it's, uh, it, you know, you could also do completely nothing with the, with the bag of bones and, and the, the fact that you were given consciousness. That's totally fine. Um, and I would never want to 
you would never want to judge someone who who went through everything that we've gone through and they just didn't do anything w- w- with it and and it's very complicated to to get into that what is what it what is um doing nothing and what is doing something with your life but i think everyone by the the end of their life they they find a way to do something they they if it might happen a lot later for people than than others and some people they they will have spent most of their life doing something that they it seemed like they were contributing and they were in a certain area but it wasn't it wasn't their their shtick it wasn't the thing that they 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 knew that they should be doing and and that's sort of what i'm referring to with my my wake up goal is that yes throughout the day sometimes i do things that are not they're not the ideal type of work or whatever but you you do them because it's part of your trajectory but that early morning is when for me early morning for other people it's it could be late at night is when you you tackle your most creative work your mcw and and if you might not do that most creative work early in the morning but the early morning could can set you up for that so I just wanted to talk a bit about that and, and the idea of of nighttime being like nighttime is when you can focus in on am I going to set up for tomorrow to 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 be able to tackle creative work and that sort of thing. So I just wanted to build that in because I don't think I talk about it. I didn't talk about sleeping and waking a lot lately, if ever yet on this podcast. And so I just wanted to to quickly go over that. I have a little a little bit that I I, I wanted to share with you. I happen to live in a, a small condo now, and I find it very funny that to me the um to me the the goal of of you know when I go out to do an errand or to to do something, <laughs> the goal for me is to not see another human. Like if I see a person, then my outing is a, a failure. I don't want to see anyone. And the joke is it reminds me of the game GoldenEye, which was a James Bond game for Nintendo 64 that I used to play with my friends. And you would creep around corners and shoot people. I mean, you could be odd job or you could be Bond. And and that was the whole point of the game. You were you were a creep. <laughs> so for me, I feel like what I've if I've come back from an errand and I, I know someone might be behind me, I, I'll like hide in a doorway. Now, and that's a being a bit ex- extreme. I won't necessarily, or I'll, cr- I'll get into my unit as fast as I can. And um, that's just sort of, I think anyone who lives in a condo can relate relate to that. I, I wish it wasn't that way, but I think, I, I think the, the big part of it has been sort of that I, I moved in here when, during a pandemic and therefore I only know the complete every person in this building I only know through wearing masks I've met some people on a on a patio that where we didn't have to wear masks and they're very nice people but the majority of my my interactions have been hallway stuff with masks and I think that contributes to this sort of fear of strangers and I guess this is a a good segue to my holiday my holiday sermon (laughs) um you know I really shouldn't be afraid of of people and 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 strangers and I think the big message that I want to make is is that you know we can we can keep an open mind to like what happens when we meet people and when, when we meet our neighbors and when we you just never know. It's it, it's um, the neighbor thing is a little weird. I mean, it's it's very transactional. It's hello, goodbye, and that sort of thing. Uh, sadly, I think a lot of people's uh, dealings with their neighbors is complaints. Is that's the only time they really need to deal with their neighbors? Is they're annoyed with with something that they do that the neighbor does, and they they need to find either complain about it to a higher authority or they need to to tell the person directly. But 
My point about the holidays is, is that it can be stressful, like having to go to events in that sort of thing. And especially for a lot of people, the holidays is triggering with family and, and that, and I think that we need to keep an open mind to like what is possible when we, you know, get together with friends and we, and we, I don't know, <laughs> just enjoy each other's company. What that's the open minded thing that I think is really important, similar to like walking through the halls. Like why, why do you need to live in, in such fear? And the, I think the big thing with, with family type events is like, would you prefer a life where you, if you could not see any family and that's, it's getting a bit deep and dark there, but I think people should really understand that, um, polar opposite if they're ever annoyed with, with this kind of overload of, of family stuff. I mean, I'm, I'm more fortunate with, with my culture is it doesn't, Christmas is not a, well, Thanksgiving and Christmas are not things that we do have other holidays. Uh, Passover is a big, Passover is like the big dinner type uh, holiday in the Jewish world. And then, but we don't have thanks, we don't have Thanksgiving and we don't have really anything for Christmas. So but I know that a lot of other people, they do get a lot of stress from this thing, even though the past two years has been all the, the family gatherings have been way, probably way smaller, I would imagine. But it's, yeah, just keeping an open mind and enjoy, just enjoying it as much as you can, because, and and I guess a lot of this, the background to all this is that I do really, it has been quite obvious to me lately that, um, I, 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 I I definitely lean towards the introversion side, but I don't like to overuse, I don't like to overuse that description because it, it makes you just only become this introvert. But I know that because I don't like bigger parties where there's a lot of people because the the conversation topics tend to be more, I don't want to say shallow, but that's, it just happens. There's an overstimulation of people and in a smaller group, you can actually talk about something. And so that's why, that's why I, I think about this topic is that for me, gatherings don't really do it for me. And I guess I used to like music gatherings way back when. But then at some point I even realized that I don't even like those. <laughs> and someone I told someone recently, I don't even think I like, I definitely don't like big concerts. Nope, 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 nope. I don't need the overload of people. Other people get off on that. I don't. So I, I, yeah, this topic has come up because it, because of the holidays is, is really here. I mean, it's, it's time to, and, and now people have to decide, are they going to, what kind of gatherings are they going to have and of what size? Because it's, um, we're going through round 17 of a pandemic. All right. So that's good. I'm actually making good time here. I, yeah, I, I've gotten through a lot of the items, so thankfully this podcast won't go insanely long. Um, books. Yeah, so this is... Oh, I almost hit stop on my audio. So this book is called Deacon King Kong by James McBride, who also wrote The Color of Water... And the Good Lord Bird, which was turned into the HBO show with, I think, Ethan Hawke, maybe, is in that show. Deacon King Kong, it was it's Oprah's Book Club 2020, one of the New York Times 10 best books of the year from, I guess, 2020. This book took me forever to read. <laughs> I'm, I'm more of a nonfiction person, so fiction is slow. 
it's slow as it is. I, I should ideally be reading very simple fiction books if I do, but this was recommended to me by someone at Type Books in Toronto, the the, the junction location, and it's um it's I'll tell you one thing about it. It's it's definitely entertaining and funny from very early on in the book. It's um let's uh let's see what I can read from the back of it is in September 69 an old church deacon known as Sport Coach shuffles into the courtyard of the Causeway housing projects in South Brooklyn pulls a 38 from his pocket and in front of everybody shoots the project's drug dealer at point blank range it's so it's this it's a it's a it's an American African American in Latin X character base with mixed in with some of the like there's a Irish cop and a and Italian gangsters so it kind of paints this picture of what's happening in this this late 60s in the in the projects and the the problem with heroin coming in and in really ruining a lot of lives and it's uh in the violence and all this is so there's there's a lot of humor in the book because the way they the the banter between every every character is really awesome hilarious but underneath all the banter is like these people are dealing with they just don't know what's going on here and 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 there's killings and and the drugs and everything and so the book was very hard for me to finish because there are so many characters and I have problems keeping track of characters and storylines and I almost gave up in the book on the book ha- over halfway through it and then I read a, I, I just checked some reviews quickly like goodreads style reviews and someone said that like they had trouble reading it halfway through as well but then they said the second half was like on fire and it was amazing and it's an amazing book once you can get there so with that review i just kind of and that's actually what it's it's like the last third of the book that i think is the part that's like on fire so two thirds of the book is probably you know as much of the same type of stuff happening you don't really know where is the story going so i took that advice i eventually finished the book but it 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 took a long time of of book time so i do i i i pretty much recommend the book but it yeah i was really as i say i was entertained by the characters and for example sport coat the 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 word king kong refers to a um a moonshine that the the deacon sport coat drinks with his buddy in a in a like a furnace room (laughs) it's kind of funny uh this book is called the music of life by the inner nature and effects of sound by hazrat inyat khan and his work has been very much cited by different spiritual leaders excuse me i have to clear my throat throat) might as well get some water while i'm there I found that book through an interview with Laraji. The um, what does Laraji play? Laraji plays like a dulcimer type instrument. Very popular. He's definitely a spiritual musician. He also he was originally like a comedian, and he somehow found his way into music. And um, yeah, Laraji, he's an amazing guy, and he he holds a he holds a special place in many people's hearts in the music world. And uh, anyways, I found the Creative Independent had an interview with him, and he mentioned this book, The Music of Life. I'm almost done the book. I put it away for a long time, but there is some really awesome stuff in this book about um, the breath and sound and. I would say is spiritual stuff in terms of like like people who are in the good state of mind and how that that can connect with creativity but but the the sort of the bad state of mind is 
is very like by his his definition is you know very materialistic type thinking and in that sort of people with with kind of finite views of the universe maybe is one way of putting it might not be able to tap into these these inner these inner these forces that that help with creativity so it, it's not really just about music i think anyone could read the book and gain some great insight into into it and he actually died in like 1926 and the, the it's very uh, it's very good to read stuff like from this era i don't know when he wrote a lot of these essays but they were for all i know they could be early 1900s so i love reading i don't read them often but books from late 1800s early 1900s are very interesting because they you can see similarities between these eras and today with with people being overly busy <laughs> industrial revolution people were worked you're you know there's you could be on any any end of the the working world and you could have identified as being uh overworked workaholicism and it's very much i'd say we are in an industrial revolution in terms of being glued to a computer screen and in that sort of thing and the way apps and and all this work and 24 7 workforce and always being available on your phone and even if it's not work there's work in terms of just if you want it to be keeping in touch with people and checking the news so anyways <laughs> the um yeah this uh, music life is definitive connection of hazrat and yet khan's teaching on sound presenting the sufi master's vision of the harmony which underlies and infuses every aspect of our lives with deep insight and wisdom, he explores the science of breath, the law of rhythm, the creative process, and both the healing power and psychological influence of music and sound. What makes us feel drawn to music is that our whole being is our music. Our, mu- our mind and our body, the nature in which we live, the nature, which, a na- the nature that has made us, all that is beneath and around us, it is all music. We are close to all this music and live and move and have our being in music. It's so it's just so beautiful. I'm I I'm really um I feel um a little emotional reading that back panel because I I think about even my friends who don't play music, but the way music has like really touched all of our lives and and I think that there's so there's so much potential for people to to really tap in into looking at music this way as and and take a moment to observe what has music done done for me and why why has music done this for me and and a big part of the answer is that that the world is like vibration is the what the world is made of it's the the earth is vibrating and like it, there's vibration and is is the is the in and that's I maybe what he's talking about with rhythm vibration is a rhythm happening at such a small uh, scale and and so there it's possible that music is one of the only things that that w- one of the only art forms that taps into one of the core fundamental forces of the universe. So I'm I'm not going to go on about that. I am also interested in how how painting taps into that and and why. I don't know much about about the therapeutic use of painting, but I'm in inter- in color, but I'm I'm interested in that as well. And so, but music this book would would deal with that on music scale and and um he's a Sufi master, but uh, he 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 references all of the great um, spiritual backgrounds, you know, from Judeo Christian Muslim. Uh, I'm not sure how much Eastern Eastern. I think there's a bit of Hindu. Yeah, he. I mean, he, he definitely goes through some Hindu, but that would take me to my next book recommendation. 
This is the the I Ching, the six dollar version from Indigo. Indigo is Canada's uh, number one bookstore, and the I Ching. This is the Hillary Barrett version of it. I hadn't had it. It's similar to the music of life, I I don't. You don't really read the I Ching. Um, it's not a book to be read, but the um, the the way it works is you're supposed to roll uh, two coins like heads and tails, and then you you calculate what your hexagram is, and you you sort of ask the I Ching a question, and then it takes you to a hexagram in the book, and you can do it through apps and that sort of thing nowadays. <laughs> Just use an I Ching app; you don't need a book. Um, but the I Ching, I believe, uh, is derived from the Tao, which is the Book of Changes. The Tao Te Ching, I believe. I'm not really sure, and I could be spouting off more false information, which is the theme of this podcast. But um, they they are all beautiful. Each one is beautiful. And I just sometimes flip open to like one of the random hexagrams. And so I just flipped open to hexagram 33 retreat. Key questions. What must you do to stay safe and whole? How can you change your relationships so they support your integrity? The old Chinese character for a retreat shows a pig and footsteps on the road. Perhaps this pig is running away so as not to be eaten. Retreat means withdrawing from what can harm you or what might swallow you up. It is a way to keep yourself whole. So retreating creates success. It is not defeat, but the way to avoid defeat, like an army that falls back and stays intact. When you retreat, you hide yourself away. You might disappear into the landscape altogether so that you will not lose yourself. The, the I should have read the oracle that goes with that is retreat, creating success. Constancy yields a small harvest. Um, so, so what I had, the longer thing that I had read to you was, was probably Hillary's interpretation. That's usually what English versions of I Ching give you, but they, they often similar to how like your horoscope and your fortune cookies always sort of line up with something that you're thinking. I'd say a lot of the, these hexagrams, you will, you can find a connection and so, you know, for example, like if the, this one I just read about retreat, well, you could say, yes, um, overusing social media is not good. I need to retreat for a bit so that I can gain a whole, uh, gain a, um, a command over, over my intentions and myself. And then I can... I can gather up some better perspective when I return to to that sort of thing. So I think it's very powerful for relating it to things that we often go through in day-to-day life. One last book recommendation because it's on my it's I'm I'm ha- halfway through this one. This is called Living with Music by Ralph Ellison. Ralph Ellison's Jazz Writings. Ralph Ellison wrote, I feel so bad. I didn't get to, I forgot to look it up. Um, Ralph Ellison is the writer of a, of a fiction novel that goes down in history as one of the most important books on racism and African American culture. And, um, what was the name? Is uh, Nope, that book, that name of that book is not on, on this book. And so I, that's, I want to acknowledge that. Oh, The Invisible Man is the name of the book. It's one of the most, most, uh, I have not read it yet, but, uh, and I actually was seeking The Invisible Man when I got this book instead, but it's been very nice essays on jazz music and just the, the thought that jazz music is, is a cult is a way of life and and it, it puts things into perspective for me if I'm ever <clears throat> learning jazz on my own is just to remember like it's like you can sit in, 
like I, I use uh, something called the iReal B app, which helps play back standards. I gotta shift my legs around. They are. Oh, this is hurting. Oh man, <laughs> I was sitting on that leg. Oh, that's better. The um, I use an app called iReal B, which plays standards like jazz standards, and then you play along with it either like the chords or you can do solos. And or you know I might practice arpeggios with it or modes, and so it's very useful for that. But this book kind of helps put into perspective, like for a lot of the 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 most famous, iconic jazz people or the most hidden jazz people, because the the first chapter of the book I think speaks about Charlie Christian, Christensen Charlie, who is a, a jazz one of the first jazz guitarists i guess like because yeah jazz i guess came out of the blues and um uh, but for these people the jazz was a way of life and it was it was not like you don't you don't you don't just turn on the iReal b app and play by yourself jazz is a conversation and it's a statement and it's it, it, it's um yeah that's just one angle of of many about what what jazz is and and what it means and its context in in history but i think it's i think it's very important and yeah i it's yeah i i last week i spoke a bit about smooth jazz and this is more we're talking about real jazz and we're talking about writings that were written in i guess ralph was writing mostly in the 60s um but yeah i i just if you yeah i can't force jazz people down people's throat and i i know i i don't also i don't i don't think it's important to force it down your own throat <laughs> I, when the time is right, I listen to jazz and I respect jazz and everything. It's the gift of jazz, but it's, it's jazz is just one, one style of, of many in one perspective. It just so happens to probably be one of the most profound styles that we can identify at this time in, in history. It, it, the explosion of, of what it meant and, um, to to have this this new language of music that kind of is you know is, comes from the blues but there's a lot of it really holds up against classical music and and the 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 virtuoso nature of of how fast some of some of these people play they don't just play fast but it's like it's intact with with uh, logic and and that sort of thing and so, so yeah, I, I I think about jazz a lot because it really speaks to to the idea of mastery. And and as I just kept going on about the, the book is talks about how it's it's a way of life and it's a cultural force and these people play jazz together and they probably played in some cases if you were in the right situation you played jazz all day until your hands were burning and and that sort of thing so those are my my holiday book <laughs> elliot's holiday book list um yeah i've gotten through almost everything i wanted to get through so don't forget my patreon is so the the patreon is three dollars a month is the is the um starter package <laughs> it's really just the support it's to say hey i really like what you're doing and I'm and the thing that I'm working on for it is an extra bit of, of uh, like I for, for originally it was supposed to be excuse me a monthly report of like what's been working for me what I'm doing and that sort of thing and now it's a it, I want to do that weekly because I think it'd be I think I might forget about stuff if I leave it to the end of the month to do my monthly report. So I think at the end of the week, I'm going to write a little thing about like what's been working for me. And um, yeah, like for example, I posted this week in the Patreon uh, 
an advanced video of this. So I'm about to play for you to end this show this video of me doing Amazing Grace on the lap steel guitar. But on my Patreon, I played the, I shared the the 10 minute version of, and I, and it was me doing it in my pajamas because that's when I, I got the inspiration to work on the track, the, the cover. So on my Patreon, I have the 10 minute version and I think the 10 minute version is actually better. It's like live looping with Amazing, with Amazing Grace. So yeah, patreon.com slash Feinberg, which is F-I-E-N-B-E-R-G. And thank you for, for listening. This video is going to transition into the video of me in the same area, but I'm I'm playing the lap steel, and that was more designed for, for social media. So thank you for listening, and I'll see you next week. All right, take care now. Thank you.